So in the last video I made a script that uh, when you start the game it goes through your entire level that you import from like a GLTF file uh, and then it creates static bodies for each of them with collision shapes because otherwise you won't have any collision shapes in your level and you'll just fall straight through. So right here if I press F12 this is instead of a script I'm not using a script this time as you can see and uh, right here if I press cancel let's say in the little UI screen it doesn't do anything and if I press F12 and generate shapes then it'll generate all the shapes for me so it just went through and created stack body collisions for each one of them so yeah so that's just how this works you don't need to pay attention to the little UV thing that was in there that was uh, I was just testing UV like messing with UVs and stuff when importing from blender but yeah you don't need to do that so this is very similar to the script that I created in the last video I have a bits array that uh, keeps track of like which layers I want to use for each collision and then I also have uh, some like a activate and press thing just to make sure I don't keep instancing the same scene over and over again when I press the button and uh, yeah and then I also like made a little path for it to load from and all that it's, it's pretty cool but um right here so um okay so if the F12 key is pressed and uh, we haven't already pressed we won't, we won't have the button held down so like if you hold it down it won't constantly keep creating the uh, instances and if it's already been activated um, if it hasn't been activated then I uh, will create a new instance of the generate shapes uh, like thing so right here he's a uh, basically loads an instance of the generator which is a scene right here so it's a little control scene that I made ignore the mesh instance that's for someone else and uh, yeah so basically I uh, if you press the generate like it's just like it just has a cancel button and a gen button if you press generate shapes it generates all the collisions for you if you press cancel it just doesn't do anything like if you accidentally press F12 you don't want to be the only decision to be to generate shapes because that might crit that might do some weird to your game but yeah so uh like back to this so we made an instance of that scene that I just showed you and these are the three things you need to worry about don't worry about any of these down here so basically um, and the so you connect the press signal to a, to the function that you passed in. So I made like a little string up here and a little button name, so you can like customize the, the name of the button from outside. And uh, yeah, so uh, basically, if you press, it, it connects to uh, that function, which is uh, I think I call it generate shapes. And if you uh, if you press the cancel button, it just goes to the cancel button, the cancel function. So I'll go down here, oh yeah, and that's just a button name, it just sets a button text. And right here, alright, so here's the generate shapes. So uh, basically how it works is that you could select multiple like spatial nodes, and it'll go through all of their children and just check for mesh, instance, mesh instances that do not have um, static bodies. So uh, right here, so uh, it goes through uh, all the like, uh, nodes you selected so it iterates through all of them and then it goes through all of their children each one's children and then it checks all their children to see if the their uh, children are mesh instances and then like I said like uh, you could select whatever you want really and this is just like a little custom thing I made I want to use it in baked light so I set that to true and uh, yeah and so right here I start off where like uh, a little variable called child gets uh, initialized to null so basically it starts off as null and uh, so I say oh if uh, get child if it has if the mesh has more than one child and um, the uh, the node dot get child is like it's it's a first one if the first one's a stack body then the child will just get that so it's something for layer down the line basically this is just to select the little layer and masks from the um, little uh, bits layer I have up here. So it goes through all three of them and just selects, like makes all those like activated. So that way all the like a little layers and masks will be, will work with all my projectiles and stuff or anything else. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what this does. So the first one is a stack body and it actually has a child, then the child will get that. Else, like it'll go through all of them. So uh, it'll go through like uh, all the nodes children so if it has more than one child, then uh, it'll it'll search for a stack body, and then like if it finds a stack body, 
then he'll set that um, stag body to the child. And then it'll like break out of this loop. And uh, But if it doesn't find anything, then we'll create the tri-mesh static collision. So this is pretty freaking cool. Like, uh, if it doesn't find a child, you're good. But yeah, I'll show you that um, doesn't crash the game when I press F12 right here, if it does actually have children. See, still works. Doesn't like have any error messages down here. So yeah, so it's fine if the opposite is true. If it does have children, and if they are static bodies, then yeah. So uh, like if it, if it, you already put stack bodies on each one yourself, then all it'll do is just select the right collision layer. So it still does some work for you, but does not necessarily as much. So yeah. So the, the whole point of this is just so you don't have to go through each mesh and keep selecting mesh to create stack uh, try mesh stack body each time. That would suck my whole fucking ass. So yeah. And down here, it just like, uh, after it's done with this, it gets rid of the scene to make sure it's deleted, and then it uh, sets activated to false. So that way, if you press F12 again, then it resets. So uh, so here's a little optional segment of the video. So I like to use Kado for creating uh, levels. I don't actually use Blender anymore because I did not like the texturing tools in Blender. It took too long for the game I was making. I'm not saying you shouldn't use Blender, it might be very good for some things. You might like the texturing tools in it. You might like to create textures like that. Like to where you have so much customization. But for me I wanted it to be quickly done and just to have it quickly set up. So what I do is I use Trench Broom and Kado. Basically Kado is like a little another little plugin right here. And I just like have like little maps selected. It's a level that C map it like and then uh, up here I have like a little scene right here. So I have the T scene where it goes over this. And yeah, as you can see, I have like a nice little level setup. So you can get like quick textures like this. So this is a way faster way to make a level than if you made it in something like Blender. Because like uh, it does all the texturing for you and you can do crazy shit with the meshes very easily. I mean, you could actually do this in Blender too very easily. I, I would know how to do this too. I know how to use Blender all right. Not amazingly, but I could do this type of stuff. But in um, Trench Broom, it's really cool because like it works perfectly if you want to get some quick texturing done. And then, yeah. And uh, so, basically, uh, I also had the um, my plugin that I created interface with this. So, right here, where is it? So, here's Collision Gen. So, um, yeah. So, basically, if you press F11 instead, it'll do the setup Kado function. So, that's why I have this Gen key function passing a function name and a button name because like you might want different functionality and I just wanted to use the same code again I wanted to use the same generator uh, scene because I think it's su still suits perfectly for Kato too because I'm still like making a level I'm still like uh, I'm still like setting up a level with just one press of a button and it saves a lot of time so down here it still has like here's like the little cancel thing for it so that's a gen textures thing and um but yeah, no, actually no. It's just like cancel. It still goes to cancel, even if like you load up this one. So the cancel button still uses the same cancel function right here. I don't know what this is for actually. But um, right here down here. So I instead I use a setup Kado thing. So it's used if the children of the stack nodes are not mesh instances and are instead physics bodies. So yeah. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So in Kado, instead of having meshes first, well, I'll just like do a full build of a new map. So instead you have a bunch of static bodies that start off, and then I'll wait for it to build. So it just built right there. So it's all static bodies and they have meshes as um, children. But if you notice, there's these little things right here, it created empty static bodies and they don't have collision scripts. So this won't crash your game, but to me it's just a little annoying. I know maybe it might have some problems down the line, as you can see it did some error messages. I probably did something wrong, but I made it to where you only need one press of one, so F11, and then you set up Kado map, and boom! It removes all those ones that were empty, and it won't really do anything to your scene. I've tried, I've tested it, and uh, everything still is perfectly fine, but just for some reason it just creates empty uh, static bodies, so there's probably something wrong that I'm doing, but of course, this is a quick way to fix it if you ever run into that error. So uh, basically, it's, it works very similarly to the last function. Just find, look for all the parents and all the ones that you've selected. So if you have, if you're selecting multiple Kado maps for some reason, then like it'll, it'll go through all of them. And then uh, 
for uh, it looked through all like all of its children, so all the static bodies. So if it finds a physics body, a static body is inherits from physics body. And then it checks if they have a child. If they don't have a child, then like it just like gets rid of them. Else, if it has a mesh, so if it checks for a mesh, so if mesh is mesh instance, then it'll use it in baked lighting. And then right here, I still set it to like all the right layers. Because otherwise, it'll still set it to the first layer correctly, but will not set it to the other layers like how you want. You'd have to go through each one and click, like, uh, go to collision and then set it up right here. But instead, with my plugin, I made it to where you just have one press of button and it does all that for you. So, yeah, so it's still the same way. The uh, queue's free and bam. So it's pretty nice, like this whole plugin idea works very similarly to the other script. And all you need to do is just have the press of a button right here. These are the three main things. These other ones are just kind of custom stuff. So when I upload the script, I'll probably have these gone because this is just for testing. Basically, I just I just quickly put this together. This is just for a debug, and this one's also for debugging. So what this one does is if I um, if I press F8 on this mesh instance. And it just sets it to white and basically it gets rid of the texture so that I could find it more easily because uh, what uh, Kado does by default if you don't group everything in trench room it'll select to it'll just make it to one mesh so basically down here I think I have something in here that oh yeah see look it said it got rid of the texture in that but if I built rebuild it do a full build The texture will come back. So yeah, so um, so here's F11, set so up map, got rid of all the empty static bodies, and then here's a little F8 showing. Whoops, F8, and then bam, it gets rid of the textures on that. So that way I could just like group it up in trench room, and then that like that works with Godot much better because Godot uses like a FOV calling system, where like anything that's not in the camera is cold and not drawn. So yeah, so right here, here's another one that got rid of. So we want to put those into groups in trench room so that, that way they're separate static bodies and separate meshes. It'll load better with Godot when you run your game and it'll be more optimized. But yeah, so I hope this helped. I hope you all have a great day and see you later.